I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have John Davidos, the head of development for Neo Global Development Seattle. John, thank you so much for being on the show. It's a pleasure to have you on today. Likewise. Thank you, Ashton. Thank you for having me on the show. It's a privilege to be here. You're very welcome. I am very excited to talk about NEO. I know that you guys just hit your three-year anniversary of the mainnet launch uh, just sometime in the last week. Uh, this has been one of the bigger projects in the space. You guys have a lot of updates that are coming, and I'm looking forward to hearing a little bit about the NEO 3.0 blockchain that's in the works for next year as well. Um, so if you would kick it off by giving us a sneak peek or what are we supposed to expect out of the new developments of NEO, uh, and then we'll talk about some of the things that just come out. But let's get a high-level overview. What do we expect for NEO 3.0 uh, that we guys are working towards right now? Oh, certainly. Yeah. So there's a lot to talk about. You're right. Uh, let me give you just a synopsis, if I may. Uh, I would say at the core, Ashton, uh, our thesis is that, you know, it is time to drive mass adoption. Uh, the time is now ripe. It is ready. The market is ready. Uh, customers and in particular developers are ready. So to enable mass adoption, uh, we strongly believe it's about developers, developers and developers. You know, this notion that somehow there's a magical D app that will change the game is just a flawed assumption. You know, there are 21 million developers across the world, Ashton. And we believe that our job is to go serve them. And in doing so, magic will happen. You know, a thousand flowers will boom. We will see, you know, D apps, you know, left, right and center. And so we believe in a developer focus to enable mass adoption. For us, for Neo3, the singular focus is enabling broad, again, like I said, mass adoption globally and investing significantly in tools like, for example, the Neo blockchain toolkit for .NET uh, in, a, in order to enable developers to, you know, with as less friction as possible to build the apps, to exploit the capabilities and enable the best possible experience for end users. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, I saw that. You came out with the uh, toolkit in the Visual Studio uh, library, is it? Can you explain a little bit on how that helps Neo developers? Uh, it takes the heavy lifting off of them? Well, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So just to give you some context, uh, if you look at, for example, VS Code, on the average, uh, Ashton, there's about 7 million developers using VS Code every month. To give you some context, you know, if you ask people, how many devs are there? who are doing blockchain or, or D app or smart contract development, you know, at best, there's about 100,000 people, developers. And so you look at where we are, you know, 100,000 people here. And then on the average, every month, 7 million developers. And so our goal, my goal here is, look, let's make life as easy, as simple as possible. Now, what does it mean? It means that unlike, for example, Ethereum, where there is a new, you know, uh, a specific language in terms of solidity, we believe in a polyglot world, i.e. you can use C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, Python, Go. You, know, you pick the language you want, we will come to you. Rather than making you as a developer come mm -hmm. to us, we go to where you are. Now further, also what this means is you know, one IDE. So for example, today, if you're building you know, a smart contract, you, know, you go get the compiler over here, the, the debugger over here, the private net and the versioning, it's a nightmare. In particular, debugging is just a major, major, major issue today. So we have strived to say, look, what does the mainstream developer know? What do they, what have they come used to? And let's make the exact same experience. So one IDE, you know, one place to go, you don't have to go to six different places to download, to install. And again, lastly, but not the least, one experience. You know, we call this the F5 experience, whether you are, Editing, you know, debugging, deploying, testing, or even pushing to test it or mainnet one place, right, out of the box. And this is basically what we have done with the Neo Blockchain Toolkit for .NET. Mm -hmm. That's very elaborate, and that makes sense to open up to all those programming languages with all the current developers in the world, not having to take that extra step to learn, in the case of Ethereum Solidity, uh, specifically just for that blockchain. So that's great Interop interoperability. I could see how... Moving forward, you could have developers working from other platforms into Neo very easily. So that's great. And I read also that in the toolkit, you're working on the Neo Express 
private network. And we talked at the beginning of this video about the Neo 3.0 mainnet. Can you give yep. a little elaboration on the differences? Is it that developers are working on the private networks in the meantime and can push things or suggest things to the mainnet, or are they one in the same? It's a very good question, Ashton. So, so the mainnet, as obviously the, the word implies, is the production public chain. Uh, what we have is also a test net where developers can test, i.e. stage the application before pushing it to the main net. The private net essentially is, is, a, is a private scope chain for developers, for a single developer or, or a team of developers to, to build, to edit, debug, test before they go to either a test net or, or a main net. And in our case, unlike some other platforms, you know, there, there are many private chains out there. But oftentimes they have built them much like a toy. In our case, with the new Express, there is symmetry of the code base. We have taken the main net code base for Neo, for Neo 2 and Neo 3. And essentially, Neo Express is essentially the same code base, obviously customized and configured for developer scenario. What this means is as a developer, you know, oftentimes you hear the story, it works on my machine. <laughs> it doesn't work in production. That is something that will not happen on Neo because it is the same code base. We have symmetry across private net, test net, and main net. Mm -hmm. That's great. And one of the other tools that's very important for developers, I believe, are code libraries and having yes. a lot of sample code built in so you don't have to work from scratch. You guys are working on the Neo FX library. Is that out right now? Or when is that out? And how will that help the developers? Oh, I love the question. I, I, I love the question. So you're right. Uh, we are working on libraries. Uh, let me give you sort of, I guess there are two perspectives here, Ashton. The first one is, you know, as a developer, whether you're building, you know, a, a gaming app or a, or a DeFi app or, or an exchange, today, for the most part, you start at the base level, at the API, and you build everything up from the API. Now, what I learned at Microsoft building and working on the .NET stack is, you know, you want to decrease the surface area. Obviously, why you say, why? Because in terms of productivity, time to market, but also security, the more code a developer writes, the more you have in terms of potential possibilities for security issues. So we are building these libraries. And as a developer, if you're building a wallet, there's only so much code to write that's left for you. Or you're building a DeFi application, you don't start here at the base level, you start here. Mm -hmm. and, and this is what we call essentially the Neo libraries. Now, Neo FX is, is obviously one category, the goal is very simple. Today, you know, if you're building a smart contract or if you're building an off-chain application or you're building a plugin for, for a node, oftentimes those are three, sometimes even more than three programming models. As a developer, you have to learn and relearn each, each, you know, each scenario separately. With new FX, we said, look, forget about it. You know, you learn the model once, the object model once, and then whether you're building a smart contract you're building an off-chain application, or you're building a custom extension for a node, it is the exact same programming model. Mm -hmm. So as a developer, less time, you know, you get to market sooner, but also less surface area. And in terms of security, in terms of testing and validation, there is so much less to do because we do the heavy lifting. Now we believe, and again, we are working with obviously our friends at Microsoft and, and, and others, we believe that something like NeoFX will be eventually an industry standard. Now, obviously, we're building for Neo first, but uh, we mm -hmm. are we do have a longer term ambition of saying, look, let's take this across the ecosystem, across the industry, and and some other time because for now, you know, we, we believe in this mission, right, of enabling uh, decentralization, of enabling developers at scale, and of course, to to create benefits for the man on the street, the woman on the street. Mm -hmm. To do so, we have to get millions and millions of developers. I believe that something like Neo FX is a huge building block in, in, in going down that path, Ashton. Mm -hmm. That's great, John. And I, you mentioned you're working with Microsoft. I saw that you recently joined as the first blockchain member in the .NET Foundation. Can you talk about what was the goal for NEO to get into the foundation and how will it help now that you're in the .NET Foundation? Yeah, I love the question. So you're right. We uh, recently, about, was about four weeks ago, uh, we are the first and at this point uh, the only uh, blockchain platform that is a member of the .NET Foundation. So wh why are we doing this? Uh, again, to go back to developers, you know, on the average, like I said, about 7 million developers using VS Code every month. And our goal is, look, even if I can get 10% of those 7 million Ashton, 
that is about five times, six times the number of blockchain developers in the world today, mm -hmm. right? So for us, in terms of enabling the extensions, making it as friction free as possible, you know, this is a huge, huge tactic in our long term strategy of taking Neo mainstream to enable our vision of the smart economy. Of course, there is more in terms of the community, in terms of working with the Microsoft Azure tool set and also to get feedback. Uh, this is, a, this is a, a singularly special opportunity for us and we're very happy and certainly uh, very thankful as well to Microsoft and the .NET Foundation uh, to do so in this partnership. That's great. And are there other companies in the .NET Foundation or other companies that you wish to partner with as you guys move forward? Absolutely. Uh, so uh, the reason you know we are in Seattle is uh, I believe Seattle is the platform city. We see in the valley more and more consumer innovation around business and commercial models. In Seattle is where Azure is being built, obviously Amazon Web Services, people like Google Cloud and so on. So our ambition uh, as the platform for the smart economy, uh, you will see us make more announcements and certainly more partnerships in the coming months with respect to the likes of uh, the Amazons and so on. So obviously I can't share too much at this stage, but certainly you know you will see us uh, make these uh, announcements in the coming three, six, nine months and so on. Mm -hmm. And I saw that last month you made an announcement about the Neo 3.0 testnet. Uh, is this preview one has launched? Can you can you touch on how did that go um, and how is it looking moving forward? Oh, so so very very good progress. We're very happy. Uh, we're actually thrilled about the launch of the testnet. It sets us up well for the Neo 3 public release sometime next year in the first part of next year. Uh, very strong developer feedback. The goal is very simple. Obviously, you know, in this world of, uh, of, of blockchain and decentralized systems, the goal is to get as many developers, as many apps as possible to give us feedback. You know, yes, we, we have a vision, we have a platform roadmap, we have published in terms of the features and capabilities. However, all said and done, the key is feedback from developers, what they like, what they don't like, the gaps, and of course, what to prioritize first. And so over the next six months, the goal is, okay, let's get the feedback, Let's then scale it and say, okay, first is this feature and so on and so forth. So we're very happy and uh, it's going to be a busy and certainly a, a fun uh, six to eight months as we prepare for the launch of uh, Neo3 mainnet. That's great. And besides the toolkit and joining the foundation, the library, are there any other uh, things that you're looking at building to bring more adoption to the Neo blockchain development? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So inside the toolkit, in fact, if I could drill down for just a, a few seconds inside the toolkit, obviously, you know, a few things. One, uh, we have customized the compiler to emit metadata to enable debugging. So second, we have the, the smart contract debugger. We believe uh, at this point, Ashton, we probably have the best in class uh, debugging experience for smart contracts in the industry. Uh, we also, like I said, investing in, in new effects and libraries. And of course, last but not the least, the, the toolkit, the extensions itself. Our goal as we ship uh, the, the toolkit is to invest in guidance. So what do I mean by guidance? Again, as a developer, there are these recurring themes or scenarios or use cases. And our goal is for the most common, you know, the most popular scenarios and use cases to enable the building blocks. For example, you know, authorization, authentication, logging, Right, being able to make them as, as GitHub open source building blocks. And so the, the developer out there does not have to reinvent the wheel. They can just pick and choose what blocks they want. And whether you're building a DeFi app or, or an exchange or a wallet or a gaming app, we think that we can significantly decrease the time, possibly by an order of magnitude. At this point, for, this, for example, right on, on the Neo uh, toolkit, you can actually build and, and deploy a, a C-sharp smart you know, contact in about three or four minutes. And our goal is to make it even simpler, even easier, much less friction. And especially with the with the building blocks, the guidance, uh, we think, uh, we believe we can change the game. And again, with the goal of uh, taking uh, this mainstream, that is a singular goal. Otherwise, we'll always be a niche, you know, that the whole industry will mm -hmm. be a niche. And, you know, what is the point, yeah. right? You know, we are here to, to change the world, right? And, and the goal is, look, there is millions of devs out there. And how do we make sure we serve them? by going to where they are, as opposed to being elite, like other platforms say, come to us. You know, we are the inverse and say, look, we will come to you. you whichever language, whichever IDE, whichever tool mm -hmm. set, we will come to you and we'll make your life easier as a developer. 
That's great, Sean. And you got to have big goals. And what uh, this is a question that I have about big goals is what are the challenges or the most challenging thing you may uh, come across in the next eight months in the lead up to the mainnet? Yeah, so, 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 so fantastic question. So obviously, you know, it behooves us to make sure that we have a very clear migration plan, that mm -hmm. we support our developers yeah. and our existing ecosystem with the tools to ensure there is a, you know, as less risk as possible in terms of taking the apps forward. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be a, a, obviously a, not a very easy journey, but certainly we remain very committed and, and we believe that the tools we build and the migration plans we have in place will be very effective. But of course, at the end of the day, the developers will tell us what they like and what they don't like. Uh, but we remain very, very committed to the journey. And again, you know, so Neo3 is just one more step in, in the in the longer term uh, yeah. you know, roadmap. So obviously, we'll do more with Neo3. For instance, we are, we are shipping Neo ID, Neo FS. You know, we are making some significant, you know, architecture changes around the Neo VM and so on. But for us, it's not a, there is no big bang release, right? It's going to yeah. be ongoing. We get Neo3, then... The next couple of weeks, we'll have obviously enhancements and features and so on, more guidance, more libraries, more tools. So it's going to be a, a, a you know a much more longer term roadmap that we remain very very singularly committed to. Actually. Yeah, the development never ends, uh, but you have those little mini wins on the way. So best of luck Absolutely. with that, John. Very well said. Very well said. Sir. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know software, and I know that it, it never ends. You're always working on the newest thing. So how can more developers learn more, get involved, uh, get access to these toolkits uh, so they can help start working on Neo right now? Thank you. So a few places. Uh, so in terms of GitHub, well, we have the it's, we, we are open source uh, MIT license. So we'd love to have devs look at GitHub, give us feedback, you know, make pull requests. Uh, we're also on the VS Code marketplace. So if you want to go search for the Neo toolkit, install the extension, play with it, you know, give us feedback. We would love to hear from from devs on what they like. You know, what else could we build on? What new features? I mean, the only the, the only reason we exist is because of developers. And it's not for us or for me to say, what is the priority? You mm -hmm. know, thus far, it's been a very strong uh, community connection. And the more feedback on GitHub as well as the marketplace. And of course, you know, always send me email, John Davidos at ngd.neo.org. Would love to hear from, from folks out there. You know, call me, tell me what you like, tell me what you don't like. And uh, I'm very happy to, to serve you. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time, John. It's been a pleasure. Let's follow up in the near future. Likewise. Thank you very much, Ashton. You have a good evening. Okay, take care of that.